You don't belong here. Just go away. Please go away. Leave us alone. Do you know where my husband is? Please tell me if you do. Oh my God, you're still here? Yeah, of course I'm still here. I'm always going to be here. stop writing about that murder. Oh, well, it's still an unsolved murder, darling. That's what makes it intriguing. Who knows what delicious details they'll dig up to the panting public about my poor dead wife. Does the article mention you at all? Margot Huntington, who uh, became Mrs. Elliot Dawn early last year. That's all. Oh. Well, at least they didn't say uh, Elliot Dawn, who became Mr. Margot Huntington early last year. Oh. <laughs> That's the way that woman treated you, wasn't it? Oh, my poor darling. I hope you know I'll never do that to you. But you're a much more famous name than Margaret. Blazing across the silver screen for more than 30, for such a long and distinguished career. You don't have to remind me how long it's been, Elliot. I don't think I've ever been more conscious of how much time has passed. That's why I want to make so much of my life now. I want these years to be the best of your life. They will be, as long as I have you. Don't they say anything about arresting anybody? Oh, just vague promises, I'm afraid. You know, I still wish you hadn't been so vague. Me? You know what I mean. To the police, when they asked you about your whereabouts on the night of the murder. I can't tell you how that worries me. Oh, but not because you think I had something to do with it. Oh, no, of course not. I know very well you had nothing to do with what happened. But even the appearance of guilt. Oh, let me tell you something, Nola. It's uh, the guilty people who have strong, if not foolproof, alibis. The weak alibis belong usually to the innocent people, you see. <laughs> yes, it's a very lovely theory. I just wonder if the Monticello police are ingenious enough to understand it. Well, in my case, it happens to be correct. A movie all by myself, a drink all by myself. Looks like we're not going to be by ourselves. Owen! Hello, Nolan. May I come in? I promise I won't stay very long. Well, actually, I was just going out. Very well. Ah, Elliot. Don't bother to get up. Morning, Owen. Come back with some more clothes? You must have quite an extensive wardrobe. I didn't come here to get anything. I came here to say something. Yes, I want to congratulate you, Nola. On the other role you've been playing, I understand your performance was even better than the one you played in Mansion of the Damned. What do you mean? I'm talking about your role of Mrs. Martha Corey. Well, I gather you've been seeing Deborah Saxon again. I just couldn't believe it. Steve and Deborah recognized your makeup. That's how they knew it was you, you know. They saw your scene in the movie. Yes, so I understand. It was very kind of you to preview the film for them, Owen, even before your star. It's just a shame that nobody was there to film your performance when you lived next door to Deborah. Really must have been something. The kindly old lady living next door to the poor young thing all alone in the world. Oh, but she wasn't alone. She had you, darling, at least on the telephone. And for more practical purposes, she had Steve Guthrie. I just 
just want you to know how despicable I think you are. Well, I can come now, Owen. Let's remain gentlemen about oh, this. Oh, shut up, Elliot. This happens to be my house, even though you are the gentleman living in it. Deborah's not going to prosecute you, Nola. But I think you're going to be punished anyway. In fact, maybe your punishment's already begun. Come on, Calvin, let's get it over with. Ah, you're overwhelmed, I see. Look, uh, Cliff, I don't have any time for any games today. I'm waiting for Calvin to pick me up. We've got business to do. The Dorn murder? Mm -hmm. Well, then your business is my business. Uh, you think I'm just a pretty face that hangs around here? No. <laughs> you forget, I'm number two over the DA's office. Since you're the chief investigating officer, you are the chief investigating officer, I am you? one of the investigating officers, yes. Yes, but uh, Cleve, uh, Steve is out in sunny California, isn't he? And you are much better looking than Calvin, so... Perhaps you could give me a progress report. Uh, I only make my reports to Chief Mallory. Hey, come on, we play on the same team. Now you pitch and I'll catch. Hey, Cliff, I have nothing to tell you. And even if I did have any new information, there's... Look, you have no new information because you and Calvin and everybody else in this town who has a badge are so busy trying to prove who didn't do it. Oh, I see. So you just settle for the obvious. Is that it? No! Hey, look, I don't want to see Draper Scott charged with this murder. Oh, the whole idea makes me sick. Oh, it does, does it? Since when did you two become friends? We're not. Oh? Yeah, you know how I feel about short, fat, bald people. It, Draper Scott happens to be tall, handsome. Well, that's why I'm not friendly with him. That's a joke. See, I'm friendly with short, bald, that, and then... <sighs> Look, the last thing on earth that I want is Draper Scott charged with this murder. Because he is Logan Swift's best friend. Now, if Draper is indicted, Logan will disqualify himself, and he will stick me with his case. Well, I should think you would be delighted, Cliff. This is an important case <laughs> oh, for you. It doesn't sure, matter who gets yeah. indicted. Look, even if I am not friendly with Draper Scott, everybody else in this town is. Now, if I am the person that sends Draper Scott off to prison for the rest of his life, who's going to be friendly with me? Will you? Oh, Cliff, you... All right, if it's not the doorbell, it's the phone. You have some sort of guardian angel. Hey, Red. Yeah, where are you, Calvin? Listen, I'm at uh, Third and Wilson. You ready to go do this? Uh, yes, uh, I am. Okay, I'll uh, pick you up in front of your place in about ten minutes. I'll be there. Can I go too? Look, this is police business, Cliff. Yes, of course. And uh, I'm not the police, huh? Where are you going? Where are you going? I will call your office when I get done. My dear, I had no idea you'd be home this time of day. I, w I would have paid my respects. Oh, what are you doing here, then? Who, me? Mm -hmm. Oh, why, I'm, I'm just doing a favor for a dear old friend of mine. A friend named Mrs. Corey? Ah, oh, yes, yes, but of course you know her. We talked about her, didn't we, just the other day. Oh, well, the poor old thing, she asked if I wouldn't be good enough to pick up a few things that she left here. You see, she's uh, moving out of the for good. Uh, oh, I see. So now you've decided to give up the masquerade completely? Ah, uh, really, Deborah, if you don't mind, I want to get through with this. Yeah, well, I would like to help you. Since I knew Mrs. Madison, Mrs. Corey, too. Uh, yes, 
Deborah. You were a very good neighbor. I can tell you that. What a shame the friendship had to end so suddenly. Yeah, how were you planning on ending it anyway? See, that's one thing I could never figure out. You just planning on spying me for the rest of my life? Or listening on the conversations I was having with your husband? Oh, but I did, didn't I? Yes, on more than one occasion. It was such a delight hearing you two billing and cooing on the phone while I sat and sipped my tea. Oh, yes, and you must have enjoyed my sickness, too, didn't you? No, I did not enjoy seeing you unwell, Deborah. But it did give us a chance to spend more time together. And you really did need nursing, you know. You know someone to watch over you, cook little things for you. Frankly, no, I never thought you could cook. Or were you just buying all those little homemade goodies you were bringing to me? Oh, dear. <laughs> My secret is given away. But never mind. I didn't really do you any harm, Deborah. You have to admit that. So I'm very glad you've decided not to make any fuss about it. <laughs> now, what gives you that idea? Oh, why, because Owen told me only this morning. Or didn't you know that he was, he was coming to visit me? No, I didn't. I thought Owen kept you informed about everything that he did. I have not seen Owen since uh, the night of Margot Doan's murder. Oh, yes. <laughs> the night you sent your boyfriend, Steve Guthrie, after me. I mean, Mrs. Corey. You know, I sure wish Steve would have gotten you that night. You know that? I think he would have enjoyed ripping that makeup off your face. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, how, how unpleasant that sounds. No woman likes to have her makeup smudged, darling. You know that. I trust that this is going to be the last time I see you in my apartment building. Is that right? Yes, Deborah, the very last time. <laughs> I'm going to miss this old place, but not very much, no. Tell me something, Nola. What does Elliot feel about this little masquerade you were playing at? It, it amused him. Oh, it, and while you were amusing yourself as Mrs. Corey, uh, you think he was alone, uh, such as uh, the night of the murder? No, uh, but please, I, I don't want to keep you, Deborah. You really think that he was spending his nights alone, going to movies and going to neighborhood bars? Why don't you talk to him about it? I that? have already, thank you. Well, then. Well, then. His answer wasn't satisfactory for me. And I think you ought to talk to him about it yourself. Look, poor Elliot is very sensitive on the subject. Margot Dawn was his wife, you know. Yes, she was. A wife he wanted to get rid of. And she refused to give him a divorce, didn't she? I have no idea. Well, I have some ideas, Nola. So do the police. It was really nice seeing you again. understands your motivation for our spending so much time together, but maybe not mine. Nicole, I've been wondering if I haven't contributed to Miles' feelings of jealousy. Hell, I used to be jealous of him. Yes? Oh, yes, I'm expecting him. Send him in, please. You want to see me, Chief? Yes, I do, Miles. Oh, I'm surprised. I thought it'd be quite some while before you asked me to do any more forensic work for this department. I know you've had Dr. Fisher doing the last four autopsies here. Well, you were obviously too busy. It's all right, it's all right. I'm not complaining. As a matter of fact, I was planning to drop by myself, tell you that I didn't think I would be able to do any more autopsy work for you. <laughs> As you know, everybody says I've been working too hard. Well, I'm not going to work that hard anymore. I'm just going to take care of my own practice from now on. I'm sure you won't be unhappy not seeing me around so much. Miles. Tell you the truth. I don't like seeing you, Chief. I see far too much of you, as it is, usually in the vicinity of my wife. So from now on, I will be available for consultation, but only in my office. I don't intend to come around this office. That's not why I asked to see you, Miles. I want to ask you a question about the night Margot Dorn was attacked. What about that night? 
I understand you had a little problem yourself that night. <laughs> you mean I got drunk? Is that it? Yeah, it's... Ah, I should have known you'd have that information. That's right, Steve Guthrie is one of your officers. Steve he? Guthrie didn't tell me a thing. Well, he'll be able to tell you anything you want to know about it. You'll probably have a great deal of pleasure relaying the whole story to Nicole, maybe over a nice candlelight dinner. I got rip-roaring drunk, Chief. I got bombed, I got smashed, I got stoned. You can use any word you like. Steve was nice enough to let me sleep it off at his place. You didn't stay at his place all night, did you? You went out for a walk, too. Yeah, I went out for a walk, so what? Where'd you go, Miles? What the hell business is out of yours? Did you go anywhere in the vicinity of the building at 123 River Shore? You mean, what are you, Margaret's building? Yes. Did you? I don't know. I, I, for all I know, I, I walked around Steve's block a, a dozen times. I don't have the slightest idea. You did. You were seen. Between 7 and 8 p.m. by the doorman of Margaret's apartment building. What is this? What is this? Just... Question. No! Question is some kind of accusation, isn't it? It's far from it. You knew Margot Dorn, of course. Yes, I knew Margot. Very well. What are you suggesting? I knew her well enough to kill her? Of course not. There are very few witnesses who saw what this happened. Now, if you can shed any kind of light on this, Miles, any kind of light, well, you know what kind of predicament your brother-in-law is in. Oh, I get it. I get it. Uh -huh. Yes, Draper is in a trap. So you want me to be in that trap, too? This is very clever. This is... A very brilliant ploy on your part. You just, you just would love to see me get arrested for Margot's murder. Is that it? Damn it! There is very little information on this case, and I'm trying. I know to raise what some... you are trying to do. You are trying to get rid of me, and you'll do any damn thing that comes into your head. Well, it's not going to be that easy, Chief. All right, from now on, my office only. Come on now. If you won't do it for me. Do it for the baby. There's just no reason for you to get up so early. It's not early. It's after 10. Yeah. You said there was no reason for you to go to, uh, to the studio I today. should go to the studio, but I'm not. I can't bear to hear all those people. Tell me how sorry they are for Margo. Well, that's good. Just, just relax. Uh, lie back and get some more sleep. It'll do you good. I didn't sleep well last night. Yeah. I didn't think you would. Where are you going? Honey, I've got to go back to the office. I have some things I have to clean up there. Yeah. Life goes on as usual. One person dies and barely makes a ripple. Hey, come on now, take it easy. I'll get that. It's probably just a messenger with some more sympathy telegrams. I'll bring you some fresh coffee when I come back upstairs. Just relax. How you doing? Uh, you know, I didn't think I was going to get a uh, police escort down to the office this morning. <laughs> well, look, we might as well get this over with Draper. We have got a warrant for your arrest on the charge of homicide in connection with the death of Mrs. Margot Dorn. Yeah, I, uh, I know the rest of the story. surprised to see you. I've been expecting you all along. Draper, you do not know how hard we have worked trying to figure out another answer to get the chief. We just couldn't convince him about Elliot Dorn no matter how hard we tried. Look, don't, don't worry about it. I understand. It's not your fault. My problem is now I've, I've got to find some way to tell April. Tell April what? April, we've got to take Draper down to headquarters for questioning. It's just a routine. It's not routine. He's under arrest, isn't he, Deborah? He's un You've arrested him. Yeah, we've, we've got a warrant, April, but it does not mean what that What it he... means is that you think he killed my mother. The whole police force thinks he no, killed my no. mother. I'm not going to let you go, Draper. April, I it, can't. It's better this way. No. I'm... Look, I'm going to go with you. No, okay, no, you wait, no, April. No, no. This is just a routine. Oh. Oh. You all right? Call an ambulance. Oh. Seems as though a harmony is hard to find Always on a mind And 
frustrated days pass without sight the edge of night half dark half light as we watch our hearts Trying to hold the tent 